acting natural. Uh, canoe project trying to build a plywood canoe in a short amount of time. Beautiful, it's turning into a beautiful day down here on campus. It was nasty this morning. Nia, I'm ready to go swimming after work if you want. So, um, Hi everyone, uh, I think we got enough of you here now. I'll maybe start a little, uh, start talking about stuff. Um, down here in North House, uh, and this is, I am the artisan in residence, they call this, which is um, demonstration for the week. Uh, so I've been here under the awning of the blacksmith shop since yesterday and I'll be here Actually, for me, it might be longer than Saturday, maybe through Sunday. I have a pretty ambitious project. Um, I'm sort of making a prototype of a tortured plywood canoe. Um, I've been interested in tortured plywood for a while. Um, it seems like a really efficient way to build a boat because um, there's a, just a whole lot of plywood twisting that happens. And basically, I've cut this pattern out of two sheets of plywood, glued them together in the middle, and uh, now I'm going to just close this up and um, seam it like you might seam a dress or a piece of clothing, and that will induce curvature into this flat sheet of wood. And uh, it seems like a very efficient way to make a, a boat that's actually pretty strong because um, the plywood is just a pretty strong material and when it's bent into curves it actually put when you put wood in tension it becomes even stiffer um, so that's pretty cool so I was sort of um when you're in tortured plywood for a long time it, it, they you know it was kind of a thing that People were playing around with a lot in the 70s. Then there was a famous racing catamaran called the Tornado that made um, hulls out of tortured plywood. And there's been some other people who have played around with tortured plywood. So I've been interested in it. And then I um, I remembered kind of more recently that a while back when I was in boat building school, I. Um, Pick this book up out of a box of books that um, that uh, someone was giving away, and uh, seemed like an interesting. Just seemed like actually at the time I wasn't really sure if I'd ever look at it, but um, I had it. And then when I was thinking about tortured plywood, I sort of remembered this is sort of a tortured plywood um, canoe, and he actually calls it. He the author doesn't call it tortured plywood. He calls it folded plywood, um, but it's the same idea. Um, this book is actually, I think, it's still sold through Wooden Boats, the Wooden Boat store out in Maine through their website, um, if you're interested in it. But um, this is the pattern that he has um, to make this boat. And I have been sort of, because I'm never one to just, uh, listen to what somebody gives me totally uh, asking a lot of questions. I um I started making models of um of the boat out of this little kind of cardboard tag board stuff. So this was this was the first model. This is this is the boat that um 
the author kind of designed. And um, then I kind of took that and started playing around with, uh, with my own models, um, just making some diff slightly different shapes, slightly more complex shapes out of, um, out of sort of the same material. So that's where we're at now. This was actually the model that I liked the most. And then I sort of took it apart because I wanted to take all the measurements off of it. So, <laughs> so this is essentially what I'm building now is a scaled up version of this, but it doesn't really go together anymore. So, um, anywho, anywho, uh, that is where we're doing this weekend. <laughs> um, so the process, uh, um, is cutting out the pattern and then I glued these two middle sheets. This is going to be the bottom board essentially of the boat. So those were glued together last night um, with a thickened epoxy. And now I've been, this morning I've been drilling these holes and um, beveling the stems. So um, I'm actually going to use zip ties to close up the stems here um, and, and sort of stitch the boat together through all these drill holes with zip ties. And it's really important uh, to get these holes directly across from each other. So I tried to be very careful when drilling these holes on this on the stem part here that they're really directly across from each other because if they're at an angle to one another referencing at an angle across the center line, they will cause the boat to become twisted as you stitch it together. So you kind of have to focus on keeping the boat straight when you stitch it together here. And on, and so on these folds that are gonna fold up. What actually happens is once you fold up the middle of the boat, these folds um, change their length. So this outside of the boat gets longer, gets kind of, actually you might say it gets shorter because it kind of, this is going to kind of shift this way as you fold the boat up. Um, so you can't really drill pairs of holes. I sort of started with drilling one line of holes and then um, as the boat sort of starts to take shape I'll come back and drill a hole across from it in, a, in the spot where it's naturally starting to fall so I can stitch it together um, in the middle. Uh, is anyone asking questions? People think this is just too weird and no one really cares. <laughs> um, so uh, the next step you know, right now I'm still beveling these stems and putting, because you do have to create space in here for this to be folded together. So I've been just with my low angle block plane and with plywood, you really want a super low angle because you're working on two different grain directions. The, the plywood runs this way in the middle and on the top and the bottom, it's running this way. You can see like this middle layer of plywood, it's running this direction. And so when you have these crisscrossing grain directions, you want a really, really low angle plane. Um, the higher angle traditional planes will just like not cut, they'll just tear from the plywood when you are on the other grain direction. So working this, And um, when we finish with this, what we're going to do is maybe I should come back here. This one is actually a little leaky. But we're going to take these sandbags. 
60 pounds of sand in a tube. And so we'll put these sandbags right in the middle as weight to hold the middle of the boat flat. And once we have weight there, that will allow us to be able to curve this together in a controlled manner and um, and uh, and make the make the shape of the boat. So it's a bit of an experiment, and uh, there's going to be some you know cracking that might happen, and the wood plow has to stretch a little bit. I have an iron down here, and what I'll do is, um, as I try to make the magic happen a little bit later today, I'll, um, I'll use an iron and heat up the outside of the plywood um, and try to get it to, uh, to give a little bit so we, can, so we can get this seamed up. So that's the magic. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm also kind of just showing off some of my other work here this weekend. Um, I recently made some more traditional woodworking things, some sea chests. Um, this is a cedar chest made with aromatic cedar and it smells really yummy. Um, it's got this little lift out, uh, so you can put stuff way down in the bottom there. And this next box is a box that is modeled after a chest I saw at the Oslo Maritime Museum. And it's just got this um, friction fitting lid. Um, it's around there and the, so but the interesting thing about this box is it's made with these rabbit joints that are just face cut into the face of the a slight rabbit cut into the face and that allows us to keep the this really the function of this joint more than anything else is to keep the box square while you're clamping it up and then the what really does the bulk of the holding are these little trunnels or pegs that are just uh, going in through the face into the sides. Um, so it's, I don't know, I thought it was a kind of a really cool, smart way to build a chest that reminded me of the way Norwegian boats are built with a lot of trunnels. And um, I think it's a efficient and elegant way to build a simple box. And, and this is a sort of a more fun, whimsical, sort of pirate chest. It's got these interesting little, um, tried to make it real yachty, it's got these little uh, pegs that slide out on both sides. Uh, this one is already out, but these hold, hold the box shut. And it's got a, uh, a little um, lift up tray inside. And, uh, yeah. So this is a more, more fun one, I think. I put a little piece of wood down there to hold it down because, um, well, it, it's got a big, I was leaving it open yesterday and, and, the, and the, I didn't want the wind to blow it over with this big barrel. It's like a sail. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave it open, actually. Um, I don't know. And then this, then we're showing off my canoe that I built this spring. This was an original shape. My own boat design. Um, it's, it's a it's an asymmetrical canoe with a really wide back end and a narrow front end, um, and uh, it's, it was really fun to uh, first sort of design it and then uh, build it with some experimental techniques, which are this um, this epoxy strip and. Uh, the uh, 
I built this as a fundraiser for the Chamber of Commerce. And last year I built a wood canvas canoe for the Chamber of Commerce fundraiser. And they said that if I was going to build another boat for the fundraiser, they wanted something really modern, and less, uh, less traditional. So kind of pushed hard on the modern thing and um, went with this kind of fun strip of pigmented epoxy. So this is this, a poured. I made this by making a mold. It was a shallow mold that was 18 feet long and about, about three eighths of an inch thick. And I poured in some pigmented epoxy and then I laid down some fiberglass and then I poured in a little bit more epoxy with some different pigments in it and um, sort of sandwiched a layer of fiberglass joining the two sheets any tricks to be aware of for that i'm assuming that they uh, mean yeah, yeah. Um, you know um a lot of people who make plywood boats buy kits to make plywood boats out of kits. That's kind of a popular thing these days. And when people do that, they often have these puzzle joints in where the plywood's not long enough and they need to make a longer piece of plywood. And those puzzle joints are nice, but you know, not necessary at all. This is a really strong joint. And what I did was I um, planed a long four inch scarf on the edges of these two boards. You can kind of see right here, um, how there's two pieces of plywood that are both planed into a, a scarf, kind of just a wedge, a, a, a four inch long slope, and then glued together with um, some thickened epoxy in there to help kind of make the joint a little stronger if it's gappy. And then what I did is I just took two pieces of wood, um, one on the bottom, it was just a piece of plywood that was covered with a sheet of plastic over it. And then on the top I had a two by four, and I put some clear plastic packing tape on the 2x4 so it wouldn't stick. And then I drilled screws through it um, for clamping pressure. If you don't want to drill screws through it, um, you can also just use clamps. Uh, you know, wood clamps on the other side of those two blocks to like kind of um, pull it together. But I, 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 you actually can get a little bit better. Um, well, I was two things. One, I was concerned about keeping keeping alignment along the middle and so the screws are a little bit easier to control rather than clamps things sometimes can shift around while you're tightening a clamp and um, I'm just gonna fill these screw holes you know I'm not this is the kind of wooden boat that's gonna be painted so I'm not too concerned about having to plug a few little holes here and there so um, yeah sending out a last call for questions how many people we have? We have, we've been uh, at around 20. Okay. Josh, do you have any boat projects for the winter? Um, if anyone has a boat project uh, that they might want me to do, I'm, I'm available to do a boat project. I am going to this fall start working on finishing a, um, a, uh, uh, um, Adirondack guideboat that I started with my, a mentor of mine, Josh Swan, uh, in, in uh, Bayfield, or he's actually in, um, uh, um, I can't, the, the town in between of, uh, Ashland and Bayfield. But, so I'm going to work on that, on that guideboat as a personal project, and then um, I'm also looking for commissions for people who might need boats repaired, uh, you know, wood canvas canoe repairs, uh, or anything like that. So, uh, people in the North House community, they need a, uh, an old boat brought back to life. I'd love to, uh, hear from you. <laughs> All yeah, right, you we got... Me, uh, my website is manywatersboats.com, and you can send me a website. You can send me an email if you go to my website. Yeah.
Cool. Well, thanks everyone for uh, coming to uh, see our little lunch and learn. Is that what we're calling this? Lunch and mm -hmm. learn? Yeah. <laughs>